we serve an awesome God. How many know that we serve a mighty awesome God? God is good. God is faithful. God is mighty. And he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. So y'all have fun with us this morning because worshiping God is fun. So let's have fun together, amen. Okay. Oh, 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 oh,
shout. As we shout. Shout your name, your Jesus. Name. Receive our praise. Receive our praise. Receive our praise. Your name is high. Your name is high. We glorify, oh God. We no other name. No other name. No other name. So here's what we come to do. We lift your name. We lift your name. Woo! Y'all make some noise. One time for the time, baby. As we love on you. As we love on you. Y'all receive our worship today, Lord. Receive our love. Receive our love. Receive our love. As we shout for you. As we shout.
situation or demons in your life, any type of demonic attack, just call on the name of Jesus. Whether you're the cyber sanctuary, sitting at your house, whether you're driving on the road, whether you listen to this message today, or five years from now, just remember that when you call on the name of Jesus, things have to shift, things have to move. Things have to change. So, so can we call one more time? Jesus. 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 The more I call him, Jesus. the better I feel. Jesus. The more I call him, Jesus. I can't sit still. Jesus. 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 He'll do it in your life. Jesus. He did it for me. He's the same God Jesus. yesterday. Jesus. He's the same God Jesus. today and forever. Jesus. So Jesus. Jesus, we love on you today. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. we lift your name Jesus. for you to draw. Jesus. Draw us near. Jesus. Draw us closer. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. salvation for your family all you have to do is believe Amen. all you have to do is believe and so right now I want to invite you to just touch the altar as a sign of you touching the hem of his garment and I pray that as you touch this altar angels begin to dispatch at your homes on your jobs at your school in the courthouse Maybe some of you know in prison, but how many of you know that God can show up there too? Hallelujah. Whatever it is that you need, just call on the name of Jesus. Because God, all it takes is one little touch from you, God. Hallelujah. Somebody has to get desperate like the woman with the issue of blood. She pressed her way through the crowds. She didn't care about who was seeing her. Didn't care about the lepers on her arms and the, the, the wounds on her body. She knew that it just took a single touch from the Lord our God. And so let's prophetically touch this altar as a sign today that God, all I need is a simple touch from you. And I believe that in the name Lord Jesus, He's gonna do it, He's gonna fix it, He's gonna solve it, He's gonna turn it around. As a matter of fact, I believe that it's already done. It's already done. It's already done. Come on, have to say, it's already done. It's already done for your brother. It's already done for your sister. It's already done. Maybe for your mother, father. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. The healing is already manifest. The restoration. The healing. Supernatural healing from God. It's already done. All you got to do is believe it. It's already done. It's already done. Someone lift the name of Jesus. Come on, I said lift the name of Jesus, not myself. We don't exalt man today, but we exalt the mighty God. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, for He sits up on high, and I'm so grateful that He looks down low, and He looked way beyond my faults, and He saw my needs. And so, God, we just want to say thank you today, God, for it's already done. In the name, Lord Jesus, I'm going to get out of the way, but I feel the Holy Ghost moving in this place. I feel the Holy Ghost moving in this sanctuary. There's something about the name of Jesus. Demons tremble. Things have to shift. When you call the name of Jesus, I'm so sorry 
I'm trying to get out of here. But he's so sweet, I know. He's so sweet, I know. He didn't have to do it, but he did. And so I'm grateful about the name of Jesus. Because when I call on him, I feel better inside. When I call on him, I can call him in the morning. I can call him in the evening. I can call him in a new day. I can call him late at night. And all it takes is just one touch. How many you know it takes just one touch? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. night for Bible study yes. and for Sunday, Sunday for service and the and Sunday, Sunday after, after that, the Sunday Sunday after after that <laughs> I promise you we have not gone anywhere and thank you for supporting us and congratulations thank you baby congratulations to all of us the last several days have been just incredible yes we have been chosen to do something magnificent for the body of Christ to support global united fellowship and we're honored we are honored yes yeah also listen by the way before I say anything else mm -hmm. Global United Fellowship is so excited. The Body of Christ is so excited because we are hosting Black Wealth Summit. It's going to be incredible. This weekend, be there. tickets are $300. $300. I know that's chump change, but guess what? If you're part of the City of Praise at the end of the service, we're going to send you out a short code. For you, it's free. Woo. Everybody can afford free 35. It's free for you. So we want you to register for Black Wealth Summit. We made sure we sowed the seed in you yes. so you can have the blessing sowed in your generations. Okay. Now, we got an incredible speaker for you today. We flew them all the way in. All the way in. All the way in. From actually, actually Pierre in Illinois, right? <laughs> yeah. But he lives in right here in our hometown, and he's a part of our City of Praise family. And God put it on us, our hearts to have him. We are confident. Yeah. That he will bless oh, you. He gonna bless you today. I we are you. confident yeah. that he will inspire you, yeah. and we are confident that the city of praise will leave today on fire. And it's gonna be significant. I love him, just like Elder Payton is for us for City of Praise Family yes. Ministries. He's the same thing to us for Global United Fellowship. Yes. And so we're really excited to present today our dear brother, Minister Willie, Willie Cooper. Cooper. Give him a big old hand clap. Minister Willie, we love you, man. Do your thing. City of Praise, we'll be back real soon. We love y'all. Love you. Amen. All right, let's get to work. Let's get to work. Well, it's been a minute since I've... Uh, Stood behind the sacred desk. Um, this is uh, an honor and a privilege. Let me just get all my stuff together here. Y'all can be seated. Y'all can sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Please sit down. All right. Good morning. All right. So honored and delighted this morning to stand before you. Uh, first, giving honor to God, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because it's through Him that all things are possible. Amen. Also, let's give honor to our bishop and pastor, Bishop Peoples and Pastor Yolanda, thanking them for their leadership, thanking them for their vision, and also for the opportunity to, uh, to stand before this, again, sacred desk this morning. I'm nervous. I'm, uh, uh, Elder Janice, when I saw you preach a couple of weeks ago, I know what you mean. Your, your stomach starts turning and I couldn't eat nothing. And I was like, you know what? I'll just wait and eat afterwards because... Uh, it's real. It's real because you want to make sure when you're here that you are delivering what God is telling you to deliver. You know, this is not about show. It's about what God is, was asking you to deliver. 
Uh, also, I want to give honor to our new presiding bishop for, of Global United Fellowship, Bishop Joe Peoples. We're not an exciting, exciting few days this week. Keep standing. Also, let's give honor to our first new first lady of the Global United Fellowship, Pastor Yolanda Peoples. Um, how many of you guys were blessed by that, uh, that classical service? That was something amazing. That is an amazing, another stone of remembrance for us going forward. Amen. Also want to give uh, honor to our chairman, uh, Chairman Meadows, to our elders, our ministers, our deacons, our intercessors, our prophets, ambassadors, to all the distinguished leaders. Thank you for your support. And I also want to give honor to the City of Praise family. Amen. As pastor says, we are the best church on the entire planet. Amen. Amen. Also, I want to take the opportunity. I got to go through all of this. This is protocol, so please forgive me. I got to follow order. Y'all can have a seat. Y'all can have a seat. Uh, at this time, I want to uh, honor a family, my wonderful and lovely wife, Roberta. Uh, my B.I.D. sweetie, as we say in the country. Um, my daughter, Jasmine, I know she's watching. She's in law school, but she, she tunes in on every Sunday. So, hey, Jasmine, daddy loves you. Keep studying. All A's, please. Uh, to my son, Jordan. Everybody knows Jordan more than they know me and Robbie. Uh, so my son, Jordan, is the University of Maryland. So uh, hopefully he's watching as well. Uh, Elder Peyton, I'll give you a funny story. Bishop told us to call our kids on last Sunday. So I called Jordan. I ain't hear from him. The whole week, I texted him. I was going through this whole thing. Didn't hear from him. It's okay. All right. And I called him about Friday morning. Called him. He didn't pick up. It's said, all right. But when you need money, you know how to call somebody very quickly. And so I was riding uh, on 450. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go home. I'm going to put on my hoodie and my, my Nikes. And I said, I'm going to go to the University of Maryland. I'm going to do a drive-by. That's what I'm going to do. So I parked the car. I'm walking on the campus. The students are like, hey, man, great game last week, even though we lost. I'm like, okay, you think I'm that young? I'm going to take it. Uh, so I just kept walking and went up to the door, knocked on the door, and one of his roommates came to the door. I said, yeah, I'm looking for Jordan Cooper. He looked at me, and he said, oh, I'll be right back. He knocks on Jordan's door. Jordan comes in, comes out, and he sees me. His face is like... I said, this is what happens when you don't call your father back. <laughs> we do drive-bys here, okay? So I love you. I'll talk to you later, and I'll walk out. So anyway, sometimes you just got to show your kids that you're crazy. Amen? All right. Also, I want to recognize my mother-in-law, um, Betty White. Uh, Betty moved in with us uh, back in July. So she's now here in Maryland with us, and I want to thank the City of Praise for uh, loving on her and making her feel at home. She's been coming to church with us. So, you know, it's hard when you're going through that type of transition when you've been living with you by yourself for the last 40, 50 years, and now you got to come deal with us. So thank you, Betty. I'm, ho I'm hoping you are having fun. Amen. All right. And then in the words of my one of my favorite bishops, Bishop G. E. Patterson, if I miss anyone, I'd like to thank Lottie Dottie and everybody for being here today. Amen. All right, let's get started. Um, got a joke. I'm going to tell this joke because I'm nervous and I need to kind of shake this thing off. Um, there was this major pet store in New York, and this pet store had a parrot. And everybody would come to this pet store to see this parrot because, again, the parrot was like a very significant type of parrot. So this new lady comes into town. She goes and says, you know what? I need to get my dog some food, some dog food. So she walks down to the pet store. She goes into the pet store. The parrot looks at it and goes, ah! You are one ugly woman. The lady was like, wait, wait. I know good and well this parrot didn't just call me ugly. So she said, you know what? I'm going to forget about it. I'm going to get my dog food. I'm going to go on about my business. She forgot about it went back home. Two weeks later, she goes to get some more dog food. She walks to the fence door, goes to the front door. Parrot looks at her. Ah! <laughs> you are one ugly woman. She said, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm, this, is, this is unacceptable. Where is the manager? I need to see the manager right now because this is disrespectful. I've been here two times, and this parrot has insulted me, called me out of my name, 
if you don't change this thing or get rid of this parent, I'm not going to give you any more business, any more services. The manager says, okay, okay, ma'am, ma'am, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. I'll make sure he would never do this again. Well, I do apologize. We want your business. She says, thank you very much. Got a dog food, went back. So, two weeks later, she comes. She walks to the store. The parrot is sitting outside. She walks by the parrot. The parrot looks at her. She looks at the parrot. The parrot looked away. She goes on into the store, gets her dog food, comes out. As she's coming out, the parrot looked at her. She looked at the parrot. The parrot looked at her and said, you know. <laughs> All righty, let's get started. Let's get started. All right. Um, I want to play this video. So when, when, I, when I talked to Bishop and Pastor, they were talking to me about um, protect this house. And everyone was excited two years ago when we did uh, protect this house at the leadership conference. And I said, OK, um, protect this house, preach on Sunday. Ooh, how am I going to do this? Because that really wasn't, you know, only about 10 or 15 minutes. So what I want to do today, I want to do something like Netflix. I want to kind of go back and give you a recap at a high level of what we did and what we talked about with Protect This House. So I'm going to do like a little TED Talk for about five minutes, and then I'm going to preach. So I'm going to take TED Talk, but then we're going to preach because that's just who I am. Amen? So I'm going to show you this video. And the reason why I was showing this video is because when we did this two years ago, I really wanted to use this as a visual to show you the craziness that's going on in the body of Christ. And with this elevation that we just got as the Global United Fellowship, the, the church, the sponsored church, the host church, y'all better get ready because it's coming. Devils, demons, people are coming from nowhere to attack what God has ordained. And so we have to be ready to protect this house. Amen. All right. Let's watch this real quick. There's a lot of stuff going out there in the church world today. A lot of things, a lot of people that don't have integrity, a lot of people that are using the church uh, in different ways that they shouldn't be doing. So therefore, that's why we have to protect this house. My scripture reference this morning for both segments is Ephesians chapter 6, verses 12. It's real simple and we all know it. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm going to say it one more time, spiritual wickedness in high places. Those demons, those devils, they're real, y'all. They are real, and we have to prepare ourselves for this. Amen? All right, so when we went through this two years ago, again, I won't go through all of it, we talked about this protect the house. And I use the sport analogy of being a coach and that there are a couple of plays that we need to take a look at. We had play one where we protect the vision. Won't he do it? Play, play two, which is the KS church, sweet baby Jesus is what we call that play. And then we had play three, which was the, the, the pastor, God is good. And here we, what we talked about was defense because defense really is what wins the game, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about defense, and we're going to go over about two or two, one or two of these. But this morning, I'm going to switch to offense because there's some things that we have to do as a body of Christ to protect this house and where we're going. Amen? So let's look at this, this scheme, protecting the church. I'm going to read this, and you guys can see it, and we can send you copies of this. In order for us to be prepared, we have to have a solid foundation. Amen? 
And that solid foundation is the divine order principle, God's divine order. Divine order is simply the way God orders or arranges things. He ordains compositions according to his divine logic and comprehension. It is his systematic orderly arrangement of all things. So the function, so they function accordingly to his divine will, the universe, every molecule, every atom, every individual, every thing that has breath, and certainly in his church has a distinct order. Amen. And in order for everything, both uh, it is it is the order for everything, both physical and also spiritual. And the one thing you have to see here is that divine order never changes because it's perfect. It is based on God's perfection and his unchangeable state. Amen. The next one we talked about is how does divine order apply to the church and its vision? The corporate divine order principle means as the church operates with God, within God's divine order, set leadership is appointed, serves effectively and equips God's people to perform the work and to protect the hearts of the ministry. So all of us, we have a set uh, leadership here. We all have responsibilities of what we need to do in order to protect this house. Amen? Can y'all scrap, can y'all scream that for a minute? Protect this house. I, I, I need a little bit more power than that. Can you scream it one more time? All right. Now, the next thing that's important for you to understand in protecting the church's vision is the pastors and the bishop spirit. There is one set leader in any house. And everybody else in that house must have the pastor spirit. If you don't have his spirit, you got to leave. You got to have his spirit. I'll read this. I'm not able to bear all these people alone because the burden is too heavy for me. If you treat me like this, please kill me here and now. If I found favor in your sight and do not let me see my wretchedness. So the Lord said to Moses, gather to me 70 men of the elders of Israel whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them and bring them to the tabernacle of meeting that they may stand there with you. Then I will come down and talk with you there and I will take of the spirit that is upon you and will put the same upon them and they shall bear the burden of the people with you that you may not bear it yourself alone. And watch this. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took of the spirit that was upon him and placed the same upon the 70 elders. And it happened. When the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, although they never did so again. You saw that transfer, that transfer of the spirits, the transfer of the anointing last week when Bishop Ellis transferred the anointing, the same for our bishop. He's, he's transferring his spirit to us. Amen. It is not productive for the leadership to try to do anything on their own, the traditional way. It's not productive wisely of God. As leaders, as members of this church, we have to have the spirit of our pastor. Amen. All right. All right. I'm going to move on because I've, I'm, I'm hearing God here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about some key takeaways. I want to just do this real quick. How do you execute these kingdom plays? We focus on Christ in the Bible. We want to pursue our purpose. We want to glorify God. We want to honor the past. We want to build on the strengths. We want to striving for excellence. We want to create, creating the future. We want to trust in God and his outcome. All right. Now, that was a little bit of what we talked about at the retreat. But now I want to bring to you the offense of what we need to do to protect this house. Amen. Amen. We talked about Ephesians. And if I had to put a, a, a tag on this particular message, I will say, protect this house, part two. All right? Protect this house, part two. The world's greatest detective, Sherlock Holmes. I'm a Sherlock Holmes fan, I'm sorry. And his faithful companion, Dr. Watson, were on a camping trip. And they were sleeping in their sleeping bags, looking up at the sky. And Holmes said to him, Watson, look up. What do you see? And Watson answered, well, I see thousands of stars. And what does that mean to you? And Holmes replied, well, said Watson, I guess it means that there's a great creator out there that we can never comprehend. It means that his ways are so far past our ways. For he created every star. He hung it in the universe and he called it by name. And then Watson paused for a moment and said and then asked, what does it mean to you, Holmes? Mm, to me, he said somberly. It means somebody has either stolen our tent 
or our house is missing. So it's often been said, City of Praise, that there are times that we can't see the forest from the trees. We overlook the obvious so often. The more advanced we become in our experiences and our relationship with God, the easier it is to to overlook the basics. And sometimes we have to go back to the basics in order to understand to go forward. So over the past several days this week, we experienced a great move of God in our house with this recent enthronement of our bishop uh, to this new presiding bishop of Global Fellowship. It is now time for us to prepare for the attacks that the demon is going to have coming from all areas. It is time for us to reunite and unify as a body of Christ in order to protect this house. So like Bishop mentioned, this is not just his elevation. This is, this is house elevation, right? So watch this. Not everyone in the DMV is excited about what happened last week. So it's time for us to position ourselves for the next level of protection. Amen. So and so this this morning, I come to you to tell you that if we are seeing carnality or we are seeing flesh or if we are seeing worldliness or fighting in the ranks during this season of elevation, it's not time for us to go to another class and deal with it. It's not time for us to go talk to Dr. Phil. It is time for us to realize that someone is trying to steal our covering and we must do what? We must protect this house. So let's forget about analyzing the problem and looking at self-improvement and everything else, I submit to you this morning that the only way that we can protect this house in this season is by doing two major things. Are you going to ask me what those are? (laughs) Please ask me what they are. Prayer and fasting. That's it. That is it. Prayer and fasting is all that we need. Turn to your neighbors and say, we got to pray and we got to fast. Turn to your other neighbors and say, we got to pray and we got to fast. So we don't need ADT. We don't need Brinks. We don't need Vivint. We don't need Ring. We don't even need the shotguns that we got in our house or even video surveillance. To protect this house going forward, all we need is prayer and fasting. Hmm. Let me see if I can help you explain that for you. The the disciples, watch this. The disciples came to Jesus one day, right? And they said, "Um, Jesus, we're having some problems understanding just what happened here. We tried to cast a demon out of a boy. And Jesus, we did it just like you did it. We used the same tone of voice. We, We held our hands out just the right way. We said the same things that you said. And we even looked preacherly when we did it. But nothing happened. And the question is, is why? And this is what Jesus said. It's right there in the the word. He said, how many hours have you spent in prayer? He said, how many days have you spent fasting? See, because you can analyze the situation from, you know, till till the cows come home, I'll tell you that goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. So here's point number one. It is an insult to God when we try to solve the problems we see through our own ability. Isaiah 31, 30 and 1 says this. Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord, who take counsel, but not of me, and who devise plans, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. So watch this. When we try to rid the church of sin through our own ability and knowledge, we add sin to sin, right? If the house is going and if the house is gone, if the covering has been removed, then it's time to rebuild it with prayer and fasting. Amen? And, and, and I've been guilty in the past, and I'm sure that we all have. We're looking at things and we're seeing things that we shouldn't see and we try to fix it on our own. And I've made the vow from now on, I'm going to try and figure out these things, not on my own, When I look up and see these stars, I'm going to start protecting this house through covering of the spirit by prayer and fasting. Amen. Now, there are three things that that we need to keep our eyes on during this next season of elevation in order to protect this house. Number one, carnality or flesh. We got to watch it. 
We got to watch it. We're not going to a church seminar or a spirituality class to correct this in the house. The way that you correct carnality in flesh, prayer and fasting. That's it. Second Corinthians tells us in chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we don't war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are what are not cardinal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and even every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into the captivity to the obedience of Christ. See, when Israel fell into carnality, the prophet Joel gave them remedy in Joel 1 and 14. And it said, consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord, your God, and cry out to the Lord. If the covering of spirituality has been stolen, rebuild and protect this house with prayer and fasting. Amen. Now, if the covering, let's go to Joel, Joel chapter 2, um, 15 through 17, it says this, blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the people, sanctify the consecration, assemble the elders, gather the children and nursing babes, let the bridegroom out, of his, uh, out from his chamber and let the bride from her dressing room, let the priests who minister to the Lord weep be between the porch and the altar, let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not give your heritage to reproach, that the nations should rule over them. Why should they say among the people, where is their God? So I say this morning, from the pulpit to the pews, it's time to fall on our knees and protect that spiritual covering over this church. It's not time to, to look at Christian books and leadership theories or, or look deep into our commentaries to find out what causes carnality. It's time to protect the house through prayer for this church. That's how we're going to fight against the flesh. That's how we're going to fight against carnality. Uh, or carnality during this particular season is prayer and fasting. Amen? Turn to your neighbors and say, this unity. We have to be a united body during this season. It is imperative that we are together during this season. There's no time to have an intervention, intervention section if we're not getting along with each other. I don't think it's time to teach a seminar on how to get along with people. I don't think it's time to go get a book, How Do You Find Friends and Influence by Dummies, and do a class. If we can't get along with each other, it's because someone has stolen our covering of unity, and we must protect this house. Now, this is not my words. This is God's word, because he says this in Psalm 133, 133. He says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is. For the brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It's like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For the Lord commanded the blessings, life forevermore. So what are you saying? If God is God's will for us to love each other, be patient with each other. Be forgiving to one another. And when we see that's not happening, we realize that someone has stolen our house of unity. It's not God's will for us to be at war with each other. So let me tell you the scripture that has something to say about loving one another. You guys know it in John chapter 13, verse 34 through 35. It says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I loved you, that you also love one another. But this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The covering of unity, my brothers and sisters, is so powerful. It protects us from the attack on the enemy in so many different forms. The Bible tells us that a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Amen? It tells us that, that one will put a thousand to flight and two will put ten thousand to flight. Amen? The power of unity is beyond comprehension. And Satan's desire is to steal that covering of unity so that we can creep in, so he can creep in and destroy us one by one in this house. 
And when I look up and see brothers and sisters fighting among themselves to point that uh, pointing out of hatred, I realize that the house could be stolen. So turn to your neighbors this morning and say, are you going to protect this house? Is this any of this making sense? OK, we teaching this morning. The third word. A lot of people don't like to talk about this. Turn to your neighbors and say holiness. A lot of people don't want to talk about holiness anymore. We look out and we see people slipping on holiness and, and we need to pray and fast until we are consumed with the desire to serve God in the beauty of his holiness that nothing is too great of a price to pay. Amen. A departure from holiness indicates a heart problem. Whether you believe it or not, it's true. When Israel began to backslide, the first thing they did was they began to dress like the heathen nation. They began to worship like the heathen nation. Blend in with the crowds around them. So when we lose our covering of holiness, saints, we open ourselves up to a kind of false doctrine or a loss of anointing. Zacharias 2, 1 through 5 says, Then I raised my eyes and looked, and behold, a man was with a measuring line in his hand. So I said, where are you going? And he said to me, to measure Jerusalem, to see what is in the width and what is its length. And there was the angel who talked with me going out. And another angel was coming out to meet him, who said to him, run, speak to this young man, say, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls because of the multitude of men and livestock in it. For I say, says the Lord, we will be a wall of fire all around her and I will be the glory in her midst. God's glory is not in the borders of the city. God's glory is in its middle. Amen. Let me say it again. God's glory is not in the borders of the city. It is in the middle. God's blessings on us comes when we sacrifice and, and we don't try to get by with the least amount of effort. But when we forget about where the borders are and we jump right in the middle of God's presence, what we will be able to tap into God's power. Church, we got to get into position and keeping our eyes open and protecting this house. Turn to your neighbors and say, protect this house. I'm about done. Here's point number two. One of the biggest lies that Satan can tell us is that we don't need church. During this season, City of Praise, we're going to need the church more ever than you expect. Watch this. God works through his church. God protects his church. God speaks to his church. Amen. The word church for my Bible scholars here appears 80 times in the Bible. And the first time the word is used is by Jesus in Matthew 16, chapter 18. Matthew 16, verse 18. And I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. When Jesus established the church, he established it in victory. He didn't say that the church would be perfect or without persecution or trial, but he said before the church ever began, when time has come and gone, and every philosophy of man has come and gone, and every institution of man-made origin has risen and fallen back into dust, I still have a church. Amen? At the safest place for you and me to be in this is the middle of the church because it is already destined to overcome. One day we will be without spot and wrinkle, but right now we have a few wrinkles. But even in spite of all of our imperfections, we still, there's still a church of the living God that's here. Amen. And one day, watch this, he is coming back for his church. Amen. You see, the church was established by Jesus, had the breath of life breathed into it by the Holy Spirit and perpetuated by the apostles. The church is still the medium 
which God speaks, anoints the preached word, heals by the laying of hands of elders, brings comfort and strength and encouragement. We have to protect this house. Amen. Last consider of praise, family, and my third point. We have to make sure that we eliminate our distractions as we go through the spiritual journey. Satan's desire is to get our attention off of what really is happening and makes us believe that it's not real. Amen? Let's see if I can give you some examples. Jesus called Peter out of the boat to walk on water with him. Y'all remember that story? As long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he was all right. But something distracted him. Maybe it was the continued criticisms of the well-meaning shipmates in the boat. Maybe it was the howl of the wind that began to break through his euphoria. Maybe it was the dousing of water from a rebel wave that caused his steady gaze to falter. But something happened to destroy his focus on the master. And suddenly, as though for the first time, he began to watch the storm and he saw the wind. And when he focused, his focus was turned from the master of the storm to the storm itself. Watch this. He began to sink. Peter, if you're going to walk on water, you can't watch the wind. You must watch Jesus. Peter, if you're going to move in the new realm of the spirit, you can't listen to critics. Stop watching the wind and get your eyes back on Jesus. The wind, although it appears real, and the waves, although you can feel the spray pounding on your face, it's just an optical illusion when your eyes are on Jesus. Amen. The second story that kind of proves this, eliminating the distractions. David came to the valley of of Elah one day to bring food to his brothers. Y'all remember that story? Now, by the time David arrives on the scene, Goliath had already been stepping out into the valley and breathing threats against the people of God for 40 days, right? And for 40 days, Saul and his mighty warriors would focus on the Philistine gargantuan that were that they were just sitting there and they were, their gaze was just erect because they were just amazed at seeing something so huge. They could never get around his threats. See, they couldn't get around his size. The booming of his voice that it echoed across the valley like thunderclaps. They could never bring themselves to believe the promise of God that he would deliver them from this uncircumcised Philistine. Now, the evidence appeared to indicate that the giant was going to conquer Israel. That there was nothing anyone could do about it. They could never get their gaze above the valley, above the problem. It filled their horizon, and that's where their focus stopped. That's that's where their hope stopped. That's where their faith stopped. That's where their courage stopped. But along comes a 17-year-old boy who was too naive to be fitting, was filled with the spirit of God. He was too arrogant to bow down to this problem, no matter how big he was. And here's the major point. You can look all through scriptures and you can, and I guarantee you, you won't find it. David never called Goliath a giant. Think about that. He never called Goliath a giant. Now, here's the kicker. Saul and his army and David were looking at the same problem. (laughs) Yet Saul decided that the giant was too large to eliminate. And David never even called him a giant. Amen. Saul gazed, stopped at Goliath. But David said, I'm going to look a little higher. You can't stop with the problem. I'm going to proceed and possess with the problem solver. Saul gazed, stopped on Goliath, and fear kept him in his tent. But David said, this is just an optical illusion. I will not look at this uncircumcised Philistine in the valley. I will lift my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. 
Your problem, Saul, is that, my dear brother, you're not looking high enough. It's not what it looks like, but your eyes, which if you keep your eyes on Jesus and you look at this false evidence, I guarantee you it's not real. In order to protect this house, City of Praise, we're going to have to eliminate our distractions, keep our eyes on Jesus, continue to pray, and continue to fast. Amen. So let's uh, take a look at how we would say in seminary, what's the humanetical transfer? How do we take what we are seeing in these scriptures? How do we transfer it to our lives? It is the job of the enemy to get us focused on problems in current circumstances. The lack of money in our bank right now, the lack of spiritual hunger on behalf of some of our family members, the fact that our children are losing their minds right now. I like to say that they are the young and the restless, thinking that they are the bold and the beautiful. Not cognizant of the fact that as the world turns, they're in need of a God and light. Amen? The fact that our bodies are sick right now, the fact that we have no food in the pantry right now, the fact that the marriage that looks like it's over, the hope that we feel that's gone. And I know these are very real issues and the evidence appears to be real and the circumstances appear to be very tangible. And discouragement and depression and lack of faith begins to set in because we can't see the answer. We can't figure out the answer to the problem through our own complex thought process because we're tempted watch this, to lose hope. But I came to tell someone this morning, I'm praying that God would open your eyes in the spirit today. You're not going under, you're going over. You're not the tail, you're the head. You're not going to die, you're going to live. What it looks like right now is not what it really is. Watch this. The devil's report says that you're sick and there's no way that you'll ever recover but the Lord's report says in Isaiah 53 and 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised by our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Amen. The devil's report says that you're broke and God has forsaken you. And you're going to lose everything. But the report of the Lord says in Psalms 37, 25, I have been young and I'm not old. Yet I have seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Amen. Mm. 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 The devil's report says that you are bound by your addictions and you will never be free. But the report of the Lord says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that what is not that's good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Whatever the situation is in your life this morning, whatever you fear that you're facing this morning, whatever false evidence has been in front of you, you need to remember that God is faithful and his promise he's made you has not died. He is alive. Amen. Turn to your neighbors and tell them these are the elements that we need to protect this house. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. These are the elements that we need to protect this house. Turn to your neighbors and say, protect this house. Turn to your other neighbors and say, protect this house. Elder Betsy, I'm an old school country boy, South Carolina. And when we're in church in South Carolina, my mother always says, son, you got to go back to the basics. You got to go back to the basics, praying and fasting. But he says, but you got to make sure 
you understand God's word. It's his living word. It lives within you. It's the ABCs of scripture, as they call it. And you know the song, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, yeah, you got it. So if I had to think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, for saving me. Minister Willie, what do you mean the ABCs of scripture? It's very simple. A, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. B, believe in the Lord Jesus and he will be saved. C, cast out all the anxiety on him, but he cares for you. D, do to others what you would have them do to you. E, encourage one another and build up each other. F, for I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and future. G, go into the world and preach the gospel of this creation. H, he is who he is. He is greater than you. He is who he is you, the greater than you than you is in me. I, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. J, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and ah, K, keep your eyes on your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. L, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. M, man should not live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. N, no one, no one can serve two masters. You can't serve both God and money. Oh, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Man, I'm getting tired. P, pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. Q, quit to listen. Slow to speak and slow to become angry. R, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. S, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all the things that will be given unto you. We are almost there. T, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. You, unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. D, verily I say to you who believes in his eternal life. W, we love him. Because he what? He first loved us. X, E, examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. Test ourselves. Why? Woo, your word is a lamp to my feet and a path into my pathway. Z, zeal for your house. Zeal for our house will consume me. Now I know my ABC. Next time, won't you pray with me? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give them praise. Give them glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. Remember, remember, in order for us to protect this house going forward, we have to focus on prayer and fasting. For us to be successful during this season, my saints, the season of elevation, 
Remember the main things. Prayer and fasting. Not living a life of carnality or flesh. Being a unified family. Living a life of holiness. Remembering we need the church to be the center of all that we do. And also, we also must do what? Eliminate our distractions. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you, Father God, for your anointing, God. It's all I came to tell you this morning. No magic tricks. No flashy stuff. What thus said the Lord. So I submit to my City of Praise family today. Protect this house, part two. I love you. Amen. Come on, somebody, give the Lord a hand, praise. How many thank God for the word? Thank God for the word, church. Protect this house, too. Hallelujah. How many of you have declared that I am going to protect this house? How many of you love your church? It is our obligation to make sure that we follow those ABCs to be able to protect this house. Come on, give the Lord another hand, praise. Come on, we can do better than that. The word has gone forth. When the word comes forth, Healing comes forth. Deliverance comes forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be all the glory. In protecting this house. Hallelujah. That was full. Thank you, Jesus. That was a power pack word. In protecting this house, we want to make sure that everybody in the house has received or had the opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Amen. We have a lot of amazing things in this ministry, but in protecting this house, it all goes back to our mission to save families one soul at a time. And at this time, I want to invite anybody who has not received the Lord Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. I want to invite you to come down to this altar. Let's clap. Let's clap. Let's continue to clap. If you have not accepted the Lord Jesus and you want to receive the Lord Jesus in your heart this day. I ask that you would meet me down here at the altar. Amen. Come on. Let's continue to encourage the saints. Amen. Come on. Come on. Let's continue to encourage the saints. If you want to enunciate the Lord Jesus and have him to be your Lord and Savior so you can help us to protect this house. Meet me here at the altar. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's just continue to encourage. Let's continue to encourage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give him a hand. Come on. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. To God be the glory. We have a moment. We want to wait for you. Come on, saints. Let's encourage our brothers and sisters as they're coming. We have a moment. This is your moment. If you hear God calling you to this house, and you hear the Holy Spirit saying, you know what? I need to be down here at this altar so I can rededicate or enunciate the Lord Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. We will wait for you. Amen. We will wait for you. If you hear the Holy Spirit this day, if you hear him now, come to the altar. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're going to give another call. If you would like to come to this altar to accept the Lord Jesus as your personal, God bless you. Let's give her a hand. To God be all the glory. God bless you. Amen. Welcome to the family. As our bishop and our pastor would say, welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. To glory to God. Glory be to God. Amen. We have more laborers in the vineyard to help us to protect this house. Amen. 
Hallelujah. And I just hear the Holy Spirit to give it one more call. If you want to enunciate the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you want to rededicate your life to Christ this day, meet me here at the altar. Come on, saints of God. Let's encourage. God bless you. This was for you. This call was for you. Amen. To God be the glory. Come on, the heaven, the saints in heaven are rejoicing right now. Hallelujah. The heaven, heaven's population is increasing right now. Heaven's population is increasing right now. To God be all the glory. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, that you shall be saved. Hallelujah. So right now from our brothers and sisters, let's give them a big hand. They made a bold step today. Amen. They made a bold decision. Our bishop always says, you never come to the altar for anything that you did wrong, but you come to the altar for everything that our Lord did right. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what we're going to do, we're going to follow those steps in Romans 10, 9, and 10. And I just want you to repeat after me. Father God, in the name, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord. That means he's my master. He's my ruler. He's my controller. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. Based on the confession with my mouth and the belief in my heart, I am saved. Give the Lord a hand, praise. Come on, saints of God. Hallelujah. The saints are rejoicing down here at the altar. Let's rejoice with them. Glory to God. Glory to God. And there's one other prayer that we're going to pray here before we leave the altar. And that's the prayer of forgiveness. Our Father said, I can't forgive you if you don't forgive. So we're just going to pray together. Father God, in the name Lord Jesus, I forgive everybody that has harmed me, that has broke me and has left me for dead. I forgive them. Now, Father, I hold them harmless. Now baptize me with fire. Give me the gift of speaking in tongues. In the name Lord Jesus, so be it. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, the saints. Come on, saints. We can do better than that. We just have some new brothers and sisters who said Jesus is the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, what we have, we have someone here that's going to pray with you, that's going to give you a free gift, and they're going to be right over here. See, Sister Brenda, right with the sign, Deacon Brenda, she has the sign up, says, welcome to the family. Please follow her. And she's got something very special with you. Congratulations on your new birthday. Amen. Hallelujah. Congratulations on your birthday. Well, amen. We are going to dismiss. Our bishop has given us instructions. And before we dismiss, see, I, I, I see, I'm, I'm just like my leaders. We forget about offering. We won't leave this house and forget of offering. If uh, and uh, ushers, you may come forward. And they're also, hey man, that's all right. We got some cheerleaders for Jesus over here, celebrating the new brothers and sisters in Christ. As you know, there are many things that the ministry is embarking upon. We have some amazing things. How many of you are excited about City World coming? Glory to God. How many of you are excited about the new youth center that's coming? There's a lot of amazing things that our ministry does here. We have Celebrate Recovery. Where are you at? We have Road to College. Where are you at? Who's, who's benefited from the food pantry? Feeding over 37,000 families a year. All of these ministries, they cost the church. But to the community, it is absolutely absolutely free. You never have to pay when you come to the City of Praise. Isn't that a blessing? And so we just ask at this time that you would just come to sow into the ministry. You could clearly see when you come to this house where your money goes. It's a blessing to be able to be around so many pastors and bishops and, and people who've come all over the world this past week. And the one thing that I continue to hear over and over is, wow, you guys were able to do all of this. And it's because of the gifts and the tithes and offerings. 
of those who feel compelled to give. Amen. 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 Thank God for giving tithes and offerings. Amen. So at this time, I just ask that you would come and you could just put your offerings right here in the basket. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Now on the screens, you'll see back here. This week is the Black Wealth Summit. Now, Bishop said something this morning. He said something on the video this morning. He said he wanted to sow back into you. What the church did, the church literally, it's not for free. The church paid for a certain amount of people to go and register. So it is imperative. Once the registration is cut off, it's cut off. It is imperative that you go and register. There's going to, you see all of the amazing people. Our Governor Westmore is going to be there. Our very own Bishop Joel Peebles is going to be in the house. <laughs> Michelle Wright, the president of TV One. Uh, Brother Ian Dunlap. We have Morris Chestnut, Priscilla Brown, and a host. I think there's 52 speakers and workshops and things. People are flying all over the country to get here for this event here at our church. And our bishop and pastor has made it so Everybody in this ministry, in this room, can have it absolutely free. And it was not free for them, nor the church, amen? But they sold this into you. So it's important that when you go outside of And It Came to Pass, Manifestation, and High Expectancy, you're going to see tables with the QR code set up. And you're going to have to put in that COPFM100. If you don't, it's going to be hundreds of dollars. You have to put that code in. And that, uh, when it cuts off, it's just cut off. So please make sure you take the time to register for that as instructed by our bishop. Amen. If all my hearts and minds are clear, if we could all stand together. Amen. I will never look at the ABCs the same way again. Amen. Can we just give the Lord one more hand for the word that came forth today out of Brother Willie Cooper? All right, we're going to pray out. After we pray, all of our first-time visitors, anybody here for the very first time? Let me see your hands. Amen. All of our first-time visitors. Amen. Give, let's give a hand to them. You're going to meet our sister right here after church. She's going to take you into a special room right here and say have a special gift for you and talk a little bit about this amazing ministry. If you've been blessed by this ministry ever, I want to hear you clap your hands. If you have ever been blessed by this church and this ministry. So for those of you who are visiting for the first time, you are in the right place. Amen. A church alive is worth the drive. If you are growing where you are going. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Lord Jesus, we thank you for the word that came forth. Father, we ask that you would sow it back into our brother Willie Cooper, Father God, and part back into him all that he has come out, Father God, and and, and gave the word to dispense to these your people that we would be edified and, and Father God we thank you for that word now God we ask that as we leave here never from your presence you would cover us in your blood give us Father God all that we need to complete the assigned task that you have delegated to us throughout the course of the week Father God so everybody lift our hands say in my life to God be all the glory whatsoever I do it shall prosper in the name of Lord Jesus so be it Amen. You are dismissed.